Hey everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Sermon Scrap. We're going to be in Psalm chapter 7 today. So we dug into that yesterday, which uh, is, is kind of the last one of, of uh, the complaining or whining psalms, as I talked about last week. Um, thought that was a, a good insight into uh, some of the mindset of some of these. Uh, David, as he was writing a lot of these psalms. Um, so a, a couple things I wanted to talk about today that I didn't get a chance to talk about yesterday. The first is there's a big difference between being blamed for something you did versus something you did not do. Now, if we're blamed for something that we did do, most of us have the, have, have a, a righteous sense of indignation about this, that someone's complaining, gossiping uh, about something that was untrue about you. But if it is something that you that you uh, did do, then people w- w- should, should feel a sense of, of fear, of trepidation, of uncertainty. Uh, there should be a, a sense of, I need to confess this sin to someone. Um, now, uh, as someone who preaches regularly, uh, I, there, there's a lot of things that I say that... Uh, often get misinterpreted or, or taken out of context or, or distorted based on how someone is, is interpreting what I have said. Like I cannot tell you how many times I've had someone come up to me and tell me uh, what I said in this in, in th- th- this phrase just stuck with them and, and uh, really spoke to them. And I'm like, I never said that. Um, but there was one time that, that someone uh, called and left a voicemail at the church for me uh, and, and said, you really hurt me by what you said in this sermon. And then they misquoted me. Uh, that was frustrating because they, they didn't even like listen or, or distill. They were only viewing it through their interpretive lens and didn't actually listen to what I said. Um, so there, there's, there's a big difference between being blamed for something you did do versus being blamed for something that you did not do. And that's kind of what David is talking about here. That's why in uh, verses 3 through 5, David rep- repeatedly says, If I have done this, if there is wrong, if I have repaid my friend with evil, then let all these negative, terrible things happen to me. Another thing in verse 7, it says, Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you. I mentioned that in the the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament text, that's translated as synagogue, which then serves as the basis, the foundation for the church in the first century. So what that is pointing to is the assembly, the gathering of God's people, is meant to serve as the earthly judgment place of God. Uh, This is actually getting us to the the need to be intimately connected and involved in a local church. Uh, We can't claim to speak for the truth, to be advocates for the truth, when we are not involved in the institution, the, the place at which the truth founded. Uh, this is, I've talked about church membership before. If you want to dig more into this, look at church membership, how the world knows who represents Jesus. This is a really helpful uh, a book just to, to begin a, a primer, a basic, an introduction to this topic and idea. Uh, and this is actually the idea that Jesus is getting to when he talks to Peter. And, and Peter says, uh, Jesus asks Peter who, who people think he is. And some say Moses, some say Elijah, others say a prophet. Who do you say I am? I say that you are the Christ. And on that confession that you are the Christ, Jesus will build his earthly church, his earthly representation, those who who claim to speak, those who do speak for God on earth. Uh, Another one in verse 9, when when he starts saying, Oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end. May you establish righteousness, you who test the minds and the hearts. It's just kind of funny. Uh, Textual note in Hebrew that is literally translated as the one who tests hearts and kidneys. Yeah, kidneys. So at, and at the time, uh, heart heart is kind of the center of the person, and the kidneys is where uh, like the soul was was thought to uh, <coughs> thought to reside. So heart and the kidneys is is a way of saying the the heart and the mind, all all your institution. God tests everything uh, we are, uh, every, everything that is true about us. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out is I, I mentioned uh, yesterday that this intimate connection between justice and righteousness we cannot neglect one for the sake of the other. Uh, it's not enough to merely have intellectual assent or agreement with with these ideas, with these doctrines, with these characteristics of, of God, we actually need to live these things out. Now I'll link to that video that we that, that I showed yesterday. It's it's from the Bible project. It's just called Justice. So a b- biblical theme, what God or what the Bible means when when it talks about justice. Uh, and, and, and there is the need for us to actually pursue living out and bringing justice to bear. That's what we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Now, I don't often give uh, challenges or encouragements uh, after my sermons, like, therefore, go do this. But in this instance, I do actually want to give you a challenge for something else to go and do this week, and that is read the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7. Uh, it contains things like the Golden Rule. It's got the Beatitudes. It's 
It's even got the Lord's Prayer in it. Uh, if you've been watching the TV show about the life of Jesus called The Chosen, uh, the, the kind of buildup of this entire season was leading to the Sermon on the Mount. And, and I thought it was a really fascinating way that the way Jesus talked about this, this sermon prep that he was doing. He called it a roadmap. Uh, so he said, if you want to know where I am, wh- look, look for the people that are living these Beatitudes, what the, the descriptions that Jesus is giving in the Sermon on the Mount out. So I'd encourage you, go read Matthew 5 through 7 this week and see what it says about what we are supposed to be doing as God's people, the characteristics that should mark all of us. I also think uh, one of the things the video brought up was Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Now, if we are not walking humbly with our God, we're not going to do any of those other things. And so that, that's what we need to do. We need to get busy living out and demonstrating the way God has commanded us to live, which is completely contrary to the way the world wants us to live, completely contrary to the way our own sinful fleshly desires want us to live. We need to reorient ourselves all the time to the way God has called and commanded his people to live. That's our goal. That's our aim. That is to be people who are devoted to justice and righteousness. So that's Psalm 7. Next week, we're going to continue in Psalm with Psalm, uh, we continue in our series in the Psalms with Psalm 8. So I look forward to, to uh, learning more with you next week.